Hello. Uh, so we're now ready to take a look at the uh, operation or, or the behavior of the uh, differential pair, MOSFET differential pair, under the condition of a small differential input, meaning a differential input that is smaller than square root of 2 V over V. Um, and again, that borderline implies that uh, the difference uh, in the signal between the gate of transistor 1 and 2 is not large enough to get to steer all the current uh, towards one branch or the other, where we get this an increase of current in one branch and a decrease of current in the other, but without getting uh, to the point of, um, of cutting off one of the branches. Uh, here I have again the, um, the expressions for the current, uh, ID1 and ID2, that uh, we didn't derive, but we had uh, presented in the previous video. And notice that uh, typically when we are talking about differential input signals, we, we go, uh, we don't like to be close to the edges uh, of those plots because you can see that um, ID1 and ID2, they are not linear functions of VID, that is that the square uh, term, VID is square inside square root. Uh, and therefore, uh, within those that region between uh, VID over VOV being minus square root of 2 to square root of 2, uh, the functions are quasi-linear. We can see that there is an almost linear behavior, but as you approach the edges, uh, it becomes less and less linear, right? And so we want to be far from those edges. And so typically, uh, for linear amplification, we are going to choose a VAD value um, that is less than uh, or much smaller than VOV. Uh, or in reality, we should say, in terms of looking at the equations so that we are going to uh, to get rid of, we should say that uh, VID halves is less than VOV. Okay. And if that is the case, um, you can see that the second term within the square roots is going to uh, basically go away, because uh, if VID halves is much smaller than VOV, then the ratio, the AD halves over VOV, is approaches zero, and therefore the square root becomes the square root of one. And so in that case, we can approximate ID1 and ID2 as being basically I halves plus I over VOV uh, times VID halves times the square root of one, which is one. And in the case of ID2, we will approximate it as ID halves, or I halves, excuse me, minus I over VOV VID halves times the square root of one, which is one. So in that case, we can approximate uh, these currents by these expressions. All right. Um, we can see that each one of those expressions for ID has two components, right? I halves, uh, which is the uh, large signal component, the quiescent component, right? Uh, in the quiescent point where no differential signal is applied, there's only a common mode signal. We get I halves through each branch. So that is... Uh, that is the quiescent current plus the differential component. So I'm going to call this, you know, the large signal DC component of I, and this will be the small signal, the small different, yeah, small signal component. Let's just call it. Uh, which is dependent on the ID. Therefore, I can rewrite those expressions as uh, follows. My small signal ID we could call this, you know, I, ID1 and ID2, right? So we can say this is I halves plus little id1, and this is i halves uh, minus little id2. Uh, they're both equal to each other in magnitude, and so I'm just going to call it little id. Okay, and that's my small signal little id, uh, which is equal to, as we have seen, i over vov times vid 
over 2. Now, if we recall, the expression for the transconductance of a transistor, so we'll note that Gm was equal to 2 times uh, the quiescent drain current divided by the overdrive voltage. And we can see how that expression resembles somewhat uh, the expression for ID there. We have I divided by V O V. Uh, we don't have a two term. However, uh, you can notice that um, ID is the drain current through each one of the transistors and I is the tail current. And they're related in that the tail current is equal to twice um, each one of the quiescent drain currents, right? And so uh, 2 ID, that term over there that is uh, on the numerator of the expression for GM, 2 ID is actually equal to the tail current, right? Since uh, each ID is equal to I halves. And therefore, we can rewrite the expression above for ID uh, following this arrow in terms of GM. GM is I over VOV, which we can see there. And so we can write ID, a small signal ID, as GM times VAD divided by 2, where GM is the transconductance of either transistor. We're assuming they're both matched. And so this will be the expression for uh, the small signal ID, which makes sense, right? It's uh, the small signal ID will be the output, and the output will be the transconductance. Output current equals transconductance times input voltage, which is VID halves. <coughs> uh, VID halves because uh, ID is the small signal current, uh, the small incremental current in each one of the branches. Okay. Now, uh, before we keep going uh, talking about uh, ID, little ID, and the small signal analysis, I do want to point out something, and is that uh, take a look at the expression for GM. Okay, uh, and you can see GM is dependent on uh, the tail current, but also the overdrive voltage, right? And uh, GM, you can see, is the relationship. Uh, between is the gain term, the transconductance terms, relationship between output current and input voltage, mm. um, ID and VID halves. And so we can see that um, if we increase our uh, transconductance, uh, or excuse me, if we decrease our transconductance, which is essentially the gain term, we will increase our linear range. Or in other words, if we uh, uh, increase our overdrive voltage, we will be increasing our linear range of operation. Okay, how is that so? Uh, well, it's not easy to see from the normalized plot of the current versus simple voltage, uh, but we can see it if we plot instead the normalized current uh, versus VID. I don't want to normalize it because we want to see what it looks like for different values of VOV. If we normalize it by VOV, then all of them will give us the same curve as we have already drawn. So this will be ID divided by I. And we have, I'm going to plot ID1 and ID2 with the same color for a particular value of VOV because what we want to see now is the effect of VOV on the uh, behavior of those curves, okay? And so I have my first set of curves. a particular value of VOV. Okay. So this will be for uh, my ID1, ID2 curves. For VOV equals, let's say, 0.2 volts. If I were to increase my VOV, um, then I will get 
an extended linear region. So basically something that looks like this. This is a similar effect to the effect of um, adding a meter degeneration in the case of the BJT uh, DFAM. That one will be, let's say, for VOV equals 0.4 volts. Essentially, the point at which uh, at which the um, all the current gets steered one way or the other is equal to uh, square root of 2 times VOV. So the larger the value of VOV, the larger uh, the value of VID that is, going, that is going to produce the current to steer one way or the other completely, right? And so we can see how uh, that point where the uh, curves reach their asymptote, their final value, uh, it's moving farther and farther away from zero as we increase VOV. Uh, the reason why that is important is that sometimes we don't, uh, you know, we don't care so much about having a large game, but but we care about having an extended linear region uh, because it allows us to amplify a wider range of input signals. And so I'm going to make a little note here regarding uh, GM. And uh, notice GM is equal to I over VOV. And uh, two things to note. One is that increasing VOV um, extends the linear range of operation. And again, that should make sense because the linear range of operation goes from minus square root of 2 VOV, so approximately minus 1.4 uh, VOV, to the square root of 2 VOV. So extending, increasing VOV extends the range. That's that's pretty clear. Um, at the expense of something, right? Because increasing VOV is going to decrease GM, which is easy to see from the equation. VOV is in the denominator, so if I increase the denominator of that expression, uh, then the overall expression, which is GM, it's going to decrease. And GM is related to the gain. Again, it's a transconductance, but in the case of a circuit where the output is a current and the input is a voltage, that's the gain of the circuit. And we can see that decreasing gain with a decrease in slope of those curves. Notice that for the larger value of VOV, um, my slope is smaller, right? And so um, the trade off here. Is a decrease in gain. That is, GM decreases. Um, now, one could say, well, if I wanted to maintain my uh, value of gain while I am increasing VOV, I could increase my, num my numerator by the same amount, right? I could increase my bias current by the same amount, I. And you can, that's point number two, uh, can increase uh, I, bias current, to basically counteract this effect um, or increase the gain again. Um, and the trade-off there, if we were to just say, yes, I need my gain, so I'm going to, even though I want an ex extended linear range, so I'm going to increase my overdrive voltage, uh, I'm going to go ahead and increase my bias current by the same amount so that um, both effects will cancel out and my GM, my gain will still be high, or as high as before I increase my, my VOV. The trade-off there will obviously be power dissipation. A higher current will produce higher power dissipation. Those are some of the, um, of the design constraints that, that uh, one has to play with and consider. All right. And next, um, uh, now that I have come up with an expression for that the small signal current in terms of GM, what I'm going to do is uh, derive, basically do the perform the small signal analysis on the circuit and try to derive an expression for the small signal voltage gain. That will be in the next video. Thank you.